Chapter 12, Swordplay. After the last tourney game ended, Jay marched back with the team toward the lockers to change, but noticed that half the guys went straight into another practice, trading helmets for face masks and carrying practice swords. Roar tryouts, explained Aziz, Aladdin and Jasmine's oldest son. You coming, he said, tapping Jay lightly on the arm with his sword. Yeah, come on, said Herky, lumbering toward the mats. We're short a couple of guys. Ben had to quit since he couldn't fit it into his royal schedule. Jay nodded, curious about this other Ordon sport that Carlos had mentioned the other day. He followed his friends into the gym, where a few guys were already suited up, wearing sleeveless blue and gold war uniforms and face masks. They were, there was a spirited duel going on in the middle of the mat, and Jay watched attentively, admiring their graceful swiftness. At last, one of the sword fighters pinned down the other one. I yield, said the loser. The fighters removed their masks, revealing their identities. The two opponent, opponents shook hands cordially, and Jay was surprised to find the winner was none other than Chad Charming. Jay chuckled his disbelief, and Chad overheard. He looked over at Jay. You think you could do better? He sneered. Can't be hard, Jay said. Let's see it then, said Chad. Suit up. Gauntlet thrown and accepted, Jay changed into a uniform, pulled on a face mask, and picked up a sword. The sword was heavier than he expected, and a tad unwieldy as well. But whatever, it was just Chad. He could beat Chad blindfolded. Turned out he couldn't beat Chad blindfolded. Instead of advancing or retreating in a line as Jay had seen fencers do before, Chad unexpectedly bounded into the wall, leaped off of it, and came around behind Jay, tagging him on the back. This caused Jay to fall, and Chad whirled around to face him. The match was over before Jay could even find his opponent. Yield? asked Jay. Chad, his sword underneath Jay's chin. I yield, Jay spat. He tossed his mask off in frustration. Chad laughed and helped him to his feet. I've been training since I could walk. What do you think princes do in their spare time? I don't know, sit on tough pillows, said Jay moodily. Well, that too, but mostly sword practice. Chad left the gym, whistling. Jay tapped his shoulder sword on the floor, making one dent after another. He hadn't anticipated such a quick defeat. He hadn't anticipated any defeat at all. He thought he would crush the pompous prince. A few strokes and he'd be victorious, but it hadn't gone down like that at all. He'd barely had a chance to raise his weapon, and the whole thing was over. Training. Isn't that what Chad had said? The guy had been training his whole life at the sport. Chad wasn't better at this. He was just more experienced. Jay tapped the sword against the floor once more. It was time for him to start occurring a bit of that experience. Roar was half parkour and half fencing, and the two were not easy to mix. There was a re reason fencers normally moved back and forth in, the, in neat little lines. They had swords in their hands, and even if the tips were blunted, they could still do real damage if they struck you. Leaping into the air and bouncing off walls wasn't exactly what a person ought to do with a sword in their hand, but Jay guessed that was the fun of it, the challenge. Jay liked challenges. He gripped the hilt. It was a saber, which was a heavier fencing blade, not like one of those flimsy ones that arced at the lightest touch. This one had some weight to it, so if you landed on it wrong, it might just slice you. But Jay guessed that was why they wore the heavy jackets, body armor, and he knew how to do it. He'd done it all the time back on the Isle of the Lost. But when he tried to run up the wall this time, he fell flat on his face and just barely missed cutting himself with the sword. That was the problem with walls. They were rather solid things, and you were generally meant to stand next to them, not on them. He was just out of practice, he decided, so he tried again. He began with a running start, jumped, and hit the wall, planning to run up its side. But when he struck the surface, he collided into it with such force that he simply sank to the floor. Actually, he crashed to the floor. Jay turned so both of his shoulders lay flat, his eyes facing the ceiling. He had to try again. 
He wouldn't give up so easily. The second jump was worse than the first. He had to toss the blade aside just to keep it from ramming a hole in his neck. This time, when he hit the floor, he came down hard on his back again. Every bit of him ached when he stood. The third jump yielded similar results. On the fourth, he actually abandoned the jump midway through the act. He knew what was coming. He knew he'd have to toss the blade, and he could see exactly how his shoulder was going to strike that floor. He was learning, but unfortunately he was learning how not to roar. He tossed the sword aside and ran up the wall easily. It was the addition of the sword that was the problem. You're doing it all wrong, said a voice, and Jay turned to see Lonnie's older brother, Little Shang, holding up a sword. Little Shang had graduated from Ordon Prep the year before and was an assistant coach of the team, taking a gap year before going home to rule his kingdom and launch his hip-hop career. Want some help? Jay was about to shake his head. His pride was bruised, and it was still hard for him to accept help when it was offered. No one on the aisle ever helped anyone else out, but he had to remind himself he was in Oradol now, and they did things differently here. Plus, it had been beyond annoying to lose to Chad Charming. Yeah, yeah, I guess I do want help, he admitted. Okay, let's start now, said little Shang. The gym had already cleared. Should we grab swords? Jay asked. I don't think you're ready for those just yet. Ouch, that hurts. I'm just being honest. So where do we start? Well, I saw how you lost your fight. Chad made a great jump. You were trying to practice that move, weren't you? Jay, Jay shrugged. Yeah, I mean, I used to be able to jump, you know, but not with a sword. Let's practice the basics first. Each time you hit the wall or the floor, you want to lengthen the time of impact. Slow it down so your whole body absorbs the force. And don't just kick off with your feet. Try putting a hand on the wall. It'll keep you steady and spread out the force of impact. Same goes for the landing. Move your whole body. You need to bend your back and knees, your arms too. Remember, slow down the impact, spread it out. That's how to jump. Okay, so slow it down and use my whole body. Jay took one step, two. Little Shane stopped him dead in his tracks. Take a few more steps. Open up your stride and give yourself a little more height so you have time to flex your body while it's still in the air. Jay nodded, absorbing the information. He started again. He took three steps, four, five this time. Big, long strides. On the last one, he leapt. Trying not to stay rigid, spreading his arms spider-like and letting two hands touch the wall at the same moment that his feet struck it. It was perfect. He was completely enamored with himself. Unfortunately, he fell straight down to the floor. Good start, said a little Shang. Better than I would have guessed for a first-timer, but never get cocky. You hit the wall right, but you need to immediately spring backward. Take the force of your own impact and turn it around into another leap. Try, to, try again. He did. He tried twice more, and then a third time. Each was a tad less embarrassing than the previous one. He wasn't sure how many jumps it took, but after a while, the landing stopped hurting. It was all start, It all started to feel natural. Little Shang handed Jay back his sword. Jay accepted it gladly. It was time to move on to the good stuff, sword play. He leveled the saber, ready for a real fight, but Little Shang just shook his head. The first thing is that you're holding it wrong, he said, fixing Jay's grip. Jay was surprised. He thought he knew how to hold a sword. You shouldn't hold it that tightly, little Shang continued. You need to keep your wrists loose. Keep your grip light so you can move quickly. If you hold it too tightly, you're locked into a position and won't be able to dodge or parry. Jay looked down at his fist. He gripped his sword so hard his knuckles were strained white. He relaxed just a little bit and found it was easier to hold once he wasn't choking it. The next thing you need to remember about making the roar team is that it's all about balance. Kind of like the jumps we practiced, but now we're using swords. It's almost like a choreographed dance. You'll learn to move on every surface and use flips and kicks along with sword fighting, said little Shang. He sprinted across the gym and launched himself against the wall, 
running up it diagonally until he flipped backward and landed on his feet. Nice, said Jay. Little Shank bowed. It's all practice. He tapped Jay's sword with his. On guard, he called. It means on your guard. Every duel starts with it. It's a tradition. On guard, echoed Jay. They circled each other around the mat. You have to be nimble and lead your opponent. If you're just reacting to their blows, you're going to lose. You have to set the tone. He attacked with a series of lunges, moving left and right, then leaping atop a chair to land at Jay's side, pressing a sword to Jay's neck. Um, said Jay. Little Shane gave him a generous smile. Let's try that again. War isn't fencing. It's not linear. We aren't simply advancing and retreating. You can move sideways off a wall, off anything. Think of it as 3D fencing. Your opponent can literally jump out at you from any direction. So you have to be ready to defend yourself against an attack that could come from any direction. How? In fencing, we protect ourselves from the front. But like I said, in roar, an attacker can approach from any angle. So you need a whole new set of moves. The side parry, the backward block, the over the shoulder cut. These are roar moves. Let me show you. Shang went through each one, carefully displaying the move, then helping Jay copy it. Shang had just given him a whole new set of tools for a whole new kind for a whole different kind of fighting. Jay was ready to roar. This time, Jay was able to not only block his coach's sword, but push forward so that it was his opponent who found himself stepping backward. Jay kept advancing aggressively, the sword singing through the air as if he'd been born wielding one. He'd even attempted to run up the wall to dodge a blow. As he fought, his confidence grew and he flipped, cartwheeling in the air when his coach tried to slash forward. He landed just as Shang had instructed, bending his whole body, flexing every muscle, one hand touching the floor just as his feet struck it. Better, little Shang nodded. Much better. We've worked on your jumps and your war moves, but you still aren't bringing the two together. But I almost beat you. I was just going easy on you. This is going to take a lot more practice on your part. Keep trying to improve your jumps, and don't let the sword be a de deter detriment to your movement. You're still too afraid that you are going to poke yourself with that thing. Use the sword as if it were a part of your body. Quit holding it at arm's length. Flex your sword arm when you hit the wall and when you land. And don't separate your jumps from your attacks. Some of the best fighters will strike with their blade midway through a jump. Or just as they hit the ground, they'll roll into a lunge instead of planting their feet. Jay tried a few of these moves. Roar was definitely a hybrid sport, and it took fencing to a whole new level. But he felt like he knew the basics now. Unfortunately, he was still back where he'd started. He needed practice. You think I'll make the team? Asked Jay. He knew he was acting a little optimist, but he'd come a long way in a, sh in a short time. How much longer would it take to master war? Sure, if you work hard enough, said Little Shang. My sister's pretty good at this stuff too. You should practice with her sometime. She just left for Northern Way to help with an issue there. But when she gets back, you should ha ask her. Lonnie, said Jay, I guess I shouldn't be surprised considering who your mom is. She's on the team? But little Shang didn't have time to answer. The gym doors banged open, and Carlos, Evie, and Mel entered, calling Jay's name and looking distressed. What's up? Jay asked, putting down his sword. You guys look like someone just told you we had to go back to the Isle of the Lost. We might have to, said Mel. Jay raised an eyebrow and wondered what was wrong now.